Hi folks, this is Melvin from Optoproductions.com and today is the day I finally dare to make a tutorial about mutable instruments, marbles. This is what we're gonna make in this video. Alright, so Marbles is ported to VCV Rack by Audible Instruments and goes by the name of Random Sampler. This module is divided into two halves. The T half, or the time half on the left, and on the right we've got the X half, or the voltage half. As you can see without anything patched, we already got some movement on the bottom. Marbles uses its own internal clock when nothing is patched into the clock inputs. Here we've got our three T generator outputs, T1, T2 and T3. T2 carries the main clock signal and T1 and T3 are variations on that. Let's focus on this half of the module for now. I've added some more modules. The main T2 output is going into elements. T1 is going into plats on the left and T3 is going into plats to the right. If you've seen my branches video before, you know this module works like a toyn cos. By default we got a 50-50% chance of flipping heads or tails. That's exactly what's happening here. You can change the clock rate by adjusting the rate knob. And you can even extend the range by pressing this button. So we can multiply it by 4, or divide it by 4. And we can favor either heads or tails by adjusting the bias knob. So if we mute elements, now we favor T1, and now we favor T3, or everything in between. The jitter knob is very cool as well. It works like a humanized function, slowly adding some random movement. Now what I like most about this module is the déjà vu knob. And this is similar to the Turing machine. We can freeze a loop when the knob is set to 12 o'clock. But this only works when the T button, right here, is activated. As you can hear, we've created ourselves a loop. And we can change the loop length with the control over here. And this control ranges from 1 to 16 steps. If I move the déjà vu knob clockwise, we can shuffle the order of the loop around. When we rotate this control towards the left, we slowly leave our steady loop. And at 7 o'clock, our loop is gone, and we're back into the realms of chaos. Alright, cool. Now, onto the right half. The X generator creates random voltages. These voltages are triggered internally by the T generator. T1 triggers X1, T2 triggers X2, and T3 triggers X3. Let's start by patching X2 to the volt per octave input on elements. And let me also grab a scope. Now you've probably seen me use the VCV random module before. And I usually connect a VCA right after it to limit the range. Here we don't have to do that. Because we've got the spread control. And that does the same thing. If we turn this control all the way to the left, we get a constant voltage. Moving up, we slowly introduce more randomness, but still centered around the same range. So we don't have to be afraid of the randomness wandering off and getting stuck in the upper or lower voltage range, which usually happens with VCV's random module. At noon, we've got a typical bell curve, but at 2 o'clock, every voltage has an equal chance of being triggered. Moving towards the right, only the outer edges of the voltage range are triggered, until at the end, it turns into a random gate, triggering only the lowest and highest value. Speaking of range, we can actually change the range by clicking this button, 
so by default it goes from 0 volt to plus 2 volts. But the next mode ranges from 0 volts to plus 5 volts. And the last mode goes from minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts. Just like the T mode, we also got a bias control right here. This doesn't apply an offset voltage, but instead it favors either the higher or the lower part of the random voltage range. So this is useful for creating bass lines or melodies. Lastly, we got the steps control. By default, it steps from one voltage to another. Moving further to the left, you can see that we are slowly adding glides. It starts to smooth out the voltages. Now finally, when we move the control to 2 o'clock, it turns into a quantizer. The further you move towards the right, the more it favors consonant intervals, until only the root note remains. The note C in this case. Now the module comes loaded with 6 scales by default. On the hardware unit you need to press and hold the voltage range for 2 seconds to change to another scale. But here we need to right click and go to the Skills menu. So we've got Major, Minor, Pentatonic, Pelloc, and two Indian scales, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Now in this part of the tutorial, I would say that we can even record our own scales into marbles, but unfortunately, that part of the code didn't get ported to VCV Rack. When you connect a keyboard's fault per octave output to the spread CV input and a gate output to the clock input, we should be able to record with a long press of the external processing button. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but after searching online, I came to realize that this must be an unsupported future. So that's a bit of a bummer, but I hope they'll add this in the future. Moving on, let's make use of our other two outputs. So I'm gonna send X1 to plats on the left, X3 to plats on the right. By the way, just like we can lock in a rhythmic loop with the deja vu knob, we can do the same thing for our voltages when we activate the X button on top. And the cool thing is that the T mode isn't activated right now, so it still generates random triggers. But of course we can activate this one as well. Oh, and I need to turn up the length of course, but if we select an odd length, we can create phasing loops. Alright, let's talk about the final two buttons we'll find on this module. And we actually got three different modes for both our T and X outputs. We've already seen the first T mode, a time cost, but the next mode creates random multiplication or division on T1 and T3. So if we move the bias control to the left, T1 is multiplied and T3 is divided. Or the other way around. Okay, so I've set plats on the left to a kick drum and the other one to the snare drum. I also added a attenuator with a mute in between and this is going into the bias CV input. Now I can temporarily unmute to get a drum fill. Pretty cool. The third mode emulates kick and snare patterns, always alternating between the two. This works in a similar way to mutable instruments grids, which we don't have in VCV Rack. So this is a great workaround. In combination with the Deja Vu knob, this can lead to some pretty interesting rhythms. And the rhythmic density increases towards the outer edges. Let's take a look at the other two X modes. And these modes decide what the controls do for each of the X outputs. In the first mode, all outputs follow the front panel controls. 
but in the second mode, X2 will follow the panel, but X1 and X3 move in opposite direction. So if we change the steps all the way to the right, we only get the maximum values, but in the next mode, X1 and X3 act as if the knob right here is set all the way to the left. The same is true for the bias. And the spread. And in the third mode, X3 follows the controls. X1 reacts in the opposite direction, while X2 acts like all the knobs are set to 12 o'clock. Both T and X sections provide clock inputs. If we grab an LFO and we patch the square wave output to the clock input on the T section, this will replace the internal clock. And now the rate will work like a clock divider or a multiplier. But the jitter function still works. So on the T2 output, we've got ourselves a drunken clock signal. Now the X clock input makes all the X outputs follow the same clock signal, instead of the individual T outputs. I might have to disconnect the trigger outputs for a second. So they're all the same. But if we disconnect the clock, they're separate. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at sampling voltages. First we need to press the external processing mode button. And now we can send the voltage into the spread CV input. We can use an external module of course, but you may have noticed that at the bottom we've got one leftover output. The Y output. And this is a random voltage with a range of plus and minus 5 volts. And it follows the rate of X2's clock input. We can change this rate by right clicking and going to the bottom to Y divider ratio. On the physical module we can change the waveform, the bias and steps by holding down the X mode and twisting the knobs. But I haven't found a way to do this here in VCV rack, so maybe that's not ported as well. But we can still patch it to the spread input and the bias will now transpose the signal, the input signal. And if we turn up the steps and switch to the first mode on the X, we should get something more harmonic. Oh, and with the spread control we can change the input range. I don't know if this is possible on the hardware unit, but we can also change the clock source of our X generators in the right click menu. So we can change the source instead of T1 going to X1 and so on. We can also change it so that T1 goes to all X's, T2 goes to all X's or T3. So they all follow the same rhythm. Now we can make it more musical by turning up the steps amount in the first X mode. So we get octaves with fifths. And slowly adding more dissonant intervals. But if we want more control, we can always use external quantizers. So let's switch this to uh, Dorian and copy and paste it. The weird thing is that now they shouldn't be following each other, but I think this is a bug. So I'm gonna initialize the module. And now it's working again for some reason. And now we can of course add some delay and some reverb. And we can even clock the delay. 
from the T2 output. And we're slowly floating off to ambient haven. All right, that's it for this module. If you want, you can check out the right-click menu because there actually are four more T modes and these aren't on the original hardware. So feel free to explore some more on your own. You'll definitely see me use this module more in future videos, but I hope this will get you up and running. And I'll see you next week with another tutorial. <laughs>